How's it going, fish heads? Got a very fun video for you today. Heading over to Moat Aquarium in Sarasota, Florida for their grand opening. It was obviously super busy, so I just got videos, but I got you on the voiceover. I've also got some interviews with some of the employees, a little bit of behind the scenes of what they have going on. Clownfish. Clownfish. We start off heading upstairs to the Florida Waters exhibit where they have two of their biggest inhabitants, two Florida manatees. These guys get about 13 feet and 3,500 pounds. You see this one using his little flipper to munch on some lettuce, and this guy's just staring me down. Then we have Stella and Finn. They're two North American river otters. And y'all, this enclosure is incredible for these two. They are actually sisters, and you can see how happy they are playing around. Some of the most fun I've seen two otters having in an enclosure. And something you're going to see, the inhabitants here are super happy. Their enclosure's super clean. Not only is Moat Aquarium super fun, it's really educational as well. This is just one of the examples. This is their mangrove restoration exhibit. This was really cool getting to see them actually grow mangroves and then little snook, redfish, other mangrove inhabitants to help regrow some of the areas in Florida that have been destroyed to hurricanes. And they also have these all across the aquarium. But you get to learn about the inhabitants in the aquarium that you are actually looking at. For my fish heads, the second floor is where the party really gets started for you. Their Florida Key Reef before you head into the Indo-Pacific exhibit is an absolutely stunning sight. Looks like this stingray back here is getting fed from behind the wall. Look at this beautiful black tip of reef sharks. Now I'm obviously never going to have anything this big on my property, but I do want to have something kind of similar, a big predatory pond. And that puffer fish right there is definitely one that would be in it. Also, this queen angel fish is just absolute stunner. Look at this little butterfly. Like I said earlier, all the animals at Moat Aquarium seemed very, very happy. And it was really evident in their shark encounter. This Epilati shark came right up to my fiance and she got to pet him. It was a super cool experience. Their Indo-Pacific reef tank was incredible. Awesome school of rabbit fish, a lot of antheus fish colonies, and obviously a ton of corals that you can see growing at the top. But the star of the show in this tank to me this beautiful collection of euphilia coral. Another plus, the staff, super friendly, super helpful. Got a couple of interviews coming up, but look at this guy. Look at this absolute unit of a snail right here. And speaking of units, look at this guy. Absolutely massive shrimp going to town with the starfish. Love this white spotted anemone here. My fiance got to touch it. And I went to touch the sea urchin. Look at him. Give me a little hug right here. Aww. These sea nettles are absolutely breathtaking. If I did a jellyfish tank or something similar, I think I'd want to go with these guys. My fiance really wants the moon jellies, but I don't know. Look at this. They got some crabs hanging out. They're having a good time, but let me tell you something. What's in the next tank, one of my favorite animals at Moat Aquarium, they would not be too happy about, the giant Pacific octopus. This guy gets about 600 pounds. This one here is about 450 to 500 is their estimate. What a cool creature. I want an octopus so bad. I don't know about a giant Pacific. It would be a dream to have one of these guys, but the requirements are pretty lengthy to get one. But look at how cool he is. A little close up of a couple of their over 2,000 suckers. Of course, they have Humboldt penguins, and like the otters, these are a crowd favorite at any aquarium, but what really set these guys apart at Moat Aquarium for me 
One, how personable they were. They weren't all just standing on the rocks, which they do some, but they were super happy swimming around, and it was a super clean enclosure. Look at this guy. He's giving me the stare. Get out of here, man. Dollar, one dollar for one penny. Great trick, great trick. Got clownfish, shovel nose shark, penguin, shovel nose shark, clownfish, starfish. Ooh, clownfish, clownfish. Heading out to the observation deck for our first look at their Florida Gulf Coast Aquarium. Just unbelievably stunning. Got a lot of great videos coming up of different angles of this 3,600 gallon aquarium. have another reef tank here with some really cool corals look at some of the zoanthids and polys down here and coral growth is something that is very essential at moat aquarium coral growth and restoration is a huge part of the moat mission they have locations in florida one of their nicer ones down in key west definitely want to visit that soon but this is one of their coral growth lab research facilities in sarasota and actually really cool for you here, get to talk with IE, who is the head of this operation. All right, so this is the uh, Coral Workforce Development Lab. So here we'll have interns, pretty much train them on how to take care of coral, take care of aquariums. And we'll have a short research project as well. Um, so a lot of this funding came from uh, the state of Florida to try and figure out the best way to grow corals, whether that be changes in lighting, different foods, whatever it might be. Um, so a big part of this lab is trying to answer some of those questions and move on to the next step, which is getting them back out on the reefs. Like I said earlier, the staff at Moat Sea Aquarium in Sarasota, super friendly. First floor, we head down to the Florida Gulf Coast exhibit. These are the moon jellies. My fiance loves them, wants an aquarium of them. I'm leaning more towards the sea nettles because I do want to do jellyfish one day. Let me know in the comments which y'all like better. I alluded to it earlier. I am going to build an aquarium warehouse on my property at some point. Probably going to be at least a year out, but this is something I definitely want. Stingrays. I've had a love-hate relationship with them, as I'm sure we've all had, if you are as big of a Steve Irwin guy as I was growing up. But man, these guys are just beautiful and have so much personality. Look at this guy waving and splashing. Now you see a Royal Grama right there? I think a Royal Grama is going to be what I end up putting in the Mantis Shrimp Tank to see if he will have a tank mate. Obviously, we'll not have one of these guys. Look at the seahorses. I love seeing these in an aquarium. I don't love keeping them as pets, but they are super cool to see in an aquarium. What's up, dude? These guys are also really unique. Look at this guy here, a little horseshoe crab. Super unique, ancient, ancient animal. And they have some lionfish. I don't know if I'll ever get a lionfish. Obviously, if I do a predatory tank, I will. But do you see what else is in here? Look at that fella. Y'all know what that is? Let me know in the comments. They have giant isopods. Never seen these before. This is my first time ever seeing these in person. They don't really do much, but again, ancient, cool creatures. And this is the view of the Florida Gulf Coast Aquarium, their 3,600-gallon aquarium. Just absolutely breathtaking. And this is where we got to meet Shelly, their mascot and ambassador. What's up, Shelly? Exploration Hall is another incredible feature at Moat Aquarium. Could you imagine trying to have a conference here? 
would, I, I wouldn't get anything done, but it is incredible. Such a cool feature that they have here where you can conduct some business. And Shelly loves it too. Now, to me, this was the coolest part about Moat C, getting to actually go into their labs and see what they have going on here. You can see some of their coral growth here, i.e. takes care of all these as well. It does look like Hyper Reef or what they use on just about all of their exhibits with coral. One of my favorite reptiles, the Carolina Diamondback Terrapin. Unfortunately, these are not legal to own in the state of Florida, but they got Booger and Smiley. Actually, this one's Smiley, and this one right here is Booger. Just gorgeous, gorgeous animals. Wish I could have one, but don't have the permits for it yet. I was like a kid in a candy shop getting to check out all the cool things they had under a microscope. One of the coolest parts is they actually had Sheila here, and she talked a little bit about the ocean exploration that they're doing at Moat. So this little girl, she's a remotely operated vehicle, so she can actually connect to you with her here and be operated. So in the teaching laboratories, we have this raceway where students can practice actually remote controlling her before we go out and maybe monitor something like the pond of the lagoon that's outdoors. So here's the camera. I can see what she sees from my screen. Um, she can also be equipped with different sensors to maybe track some ocean chemistry compounds, temperature, salinity, what have you. And she can be rid with attachments to be able to grab and retrieve things. So perhaps you can see some plastic pollution under the waves where you want to grab it and then take it out of the water too. She's a much smaller scale of the very large ROVs and autonomous vehicles that are deployed out in the ocean to do things from deep sea research to red tide monitoring um, to other ocean chemistry monitoring and so on and so forth. But given that she's in a small package within these teaching labs, it makes her really accessible vehicle for students to practice on and get a handle using certain types of equipment, setting them up for success in maybe future engineering or ocean um, Real time, every single one of these points, we can get to them and squiggles and airplane and flag looking things, is all a piece of ocean technology that is in real time in our Gulf or in our Atlantic oceans. So these maps are more so things like a large buoy with sensors attached, so they're more stationary. And that has benefits for maybe long-term monitoring of a certain area. Maybe we're seeing the increase of a certain chemical compound. We might have a heads up of maybe there's a lot of polluting going on in that area or what have you, or that there's some current that's bringing in different nutrients or anything else. But there's also some, do you see them? They come in little airplanes. Those are autonomous vehicles. We call them gliders. There's an artistic representation of one of Moe's, um, Moe Jeannie, named after our founder, Dr. Eugenie Clark. But we also have a smaller one named the Road for the Ocean Explorer. Um, the kids really get a kick out of that. So they use very um, simple like, counterbalance systems and internal like buoyancy mechanisms. So they just on their very own follow almost like a wave-like trajectory in the ocean. And every time they come up to the surface, it pings to a satellite. So all the while they're in the water, they're collecting data at the surface, it pings to us in real time. And so we're able to monitor things like currents, see where she's being pushed. Um, so all the swivels here on the map is actually their path of data collection. So it seems like if we move it in circle, we see either on this map that there's some underwater currents happening that might account for the trajectories. But something like this gives us a very real picture of what research is going on. If maybe there's an area already being heavily monitored, maybe better parts to invest in putting our technology somewhere else so we get a more clear picture of what's going on in the Gulf. One of the data then you're able to see which researcher the technology belongs to, what its position is at a given time, the data, and even parting of the data as well. And this is public access. This is something that the public can uh, go and see as well. What's the website, Gandalf? This is gandalf.gcoos.org. Overall, I cannot recommend Moat Aquarium enough to take the family out to and learn a little bit about nature. I highly recommend taking your kids or little brother, cousin, whatever young person there, because this is a great place to learn about marine life. And it's so important to teach younger generations about the importance of our oceans and marine life, because as David Attenborough once said, 
If children don't grow up learning about nature and appreciating it, they won't understand it. And if they don't understand it, they won't protect it. And if they don't protect it, who will?